Hey guys. So today's video is going to be obviously about a couple of companies that I personally do not support nor would I ever buy things from. And this video, even though it is obviously my opinion, it might make some people upset. And if you don't agree with me, that's perfectly okay. I'm not telling you to agree with me by any means. You are all adults and you are more than welcome to make your own opinions and form your own opinions about these brands and their owners. But I just figured I'd bring to the light some things that I found out about these brands and let you guys decide how you guys feel about them. But for me personally, they are not brands I would ever invest any of my hard earned money into. I was going to do my entire list of all the brands I wouldn't buy from, but that would make this video at least an hour long. Though if you guys end up liking this video not actually liking it but if you do like what I'm talking about let me know down below if you would like this to become a series on my channel and I want to also just point out and say that yes I know that some of the things I'm gonna talk about happened many many years ago but there are things that I just cannot bring myself to get past at least not enough to spend my money on them, you know what I mean? Alright, so the first company is Z Palette, and I'm pretty sure you guys all know why. But just in case you probably don't know, here's what you need to know. Basically, Z Palette came out with this thing called the D Potter a couple months ago. And people had very mixed feelings about it. There was some positivity about it and people were excited about it, but there was a lot more negative things about it. And that's what triggered the owner or somebody at Z Palette to start clapping back at what some people were saying. Before I continue, clapping back at people, especially when it comes to brands, has become kind of popular nowadays. We've seen Wendy's do it, we've seen other brands do it, we've seen big box stores do it. When it's done tastefully and it's all in good fun, that's one thing. But a lot of what these people were saying to the customers was very, very wrong and very rude. So people were basically pissed off because this new Z Potter was $85, which does seem pretty steep. And the response was not, okay, well this is why it's worth that much money. No, their response was, it's not that it's expensive, it's that you can't afford it. And then to top it all off, they say, you look like a cheap date, but we're not messing with you. Now, I don't know about you guys, but if I was one of the customers who just pointed out the fact that this is kind of expensive for a product, and the company who I'm talking to came at me like that, they would have a shit storm as far as me going after them. Because let's be honest here guys, that machine is not something that you can't find anywhere else for a much cheaper price. As a matter of fact, you can go to Walmart right now and pick up a wax warmer. As a matter of fact, I have one. Let me go grab it. I was looking for my flat round wax warmer, but I can't find it anywhere. I don't know why. I know I have it here somewhere. It's just a matter of finding it. But anyways, I digress. I have this one here that I actually have used before to depot some of my smaller single shadows. And it does an amazing job of doing so. This one in particular is from the brand Sensi. Its main selling point was that you can control the heat on it which you could pretty much do nowadays with any wax warmer. So in all honesty, I can understand why people are kind of like, why would I spend $85 on that? Especially when people can just search for an alternative and just buy a fucking wax warmer for $5 at the dollar store and get the same thing. But I understand also where they're coming from. They found their niche because obviously depotting is very popular here in the community. But still, to be that angry about it, I mean, why be that vicious toward your customers? Like, yes, let them be angry, let them be mad about it, but that doesn't mean you sit down to their level and say these fucked up things to them. Now, because of it, both BoxyCharm and Makeup Geek severed all ties with Z Palette and took to social media to pretty much combat against them with their bullying. So in all honesty, I just would not spend my money on something like that, especially when, like I said and pointed out, there are products you can find at the dollar store, literally at Dollar Tree nowadays, that serve the exact same purpose. Like you were shitty to your customers for what reason, and now look, you've been dropped by two really, really big companies who gave your brand exposure. So I mean, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Number two is LA Splash Cosmetics. 
Now, the story behind why I will never, ever, ever, ever support this company is disgusting for two reasons. It's disgusting for number one, because it fucking happens to a bunch of fucking females for no fucking reason. And it's disgusting and grossly disturbing because not many people know about it. It was not resolved in the public eye. It was kept very private. But honestly, I think everyone should know who they're buying things from. So let's just get into what had happened. So LA Splash is owned by a man named John Davler and his his VP, his vice president of the company, is Christina Yang. Now, Yang is the main character of the story, so let's go ahead and get into it. Basically, what had happened was Yang went to the restroom one day at work and found a used pad on the floor of the bathroom and, in a fit of rage, ordered all of the female employees to meet in the bathroom for vaginal inspections. This was to determine who the fuck left a dirty pad on the floor of the bathroom. The employees who were affected by this disgusting behavior by a fucking vice president President, filed a complaint back in 2013 when this whole thing happened, but the result of that case are basically non-existent. Instead of owning up to what had happened and firing Yang for being a fucking despicable, disgusting human being, Davler instead tried to pass the buck on to the insurance company to cover whatever was going to be taken care of. Which I'm sure was obviously going to be money because why would he go to an insurance company for anything else? The courts basically said, uh, fuck no, you're going to deal with this, and the rest is a fucking mystery because nothing else was publicized. Aunt Flo is already a fucking terrible bitch to deal with monthly without you being a creepy ass bitch in the process to make it worse. I understand that seeing a used pad or a used tampon anywhere is gross, but there are more professional, more subtle ways to deal with things like that. Like number one, how about you send a fucking email to all the females in the office? Or if you want to be a little bit more blatant about it, put a fucking sign up in the bathroom. You don't fucking call all these females into the bathroom for vaginal inspections. That's fucking disgusting. What gives you the right to invade people's privacy like that. Anyways, the whole thing was handled atrociously and I will never invest any of my money into that brand ever in my life. Gerard Cosmetics, also known as Karina Kaboom's claim to fame. I don't have much to say about this company, but I will say that obviously we all know what had happened. The owner of Gerard had gone into Snapchat alongside Manny MUA. There was a review put up by Karina Kaboom, and in the review video, she was very, very open about her distaste of the Gerard cosmetic product she was reviewing. Jen, who is the owner of Gerard, got wind of it, watched the video with Manny next to her, and called her the ugliest fucking person she'd ever seen. After that whole thing went public, that brand just went to shit pretty quickly. Literally all the influencers who were pushing their products stopped pushing them. And I haven't heard of a Gerard cosmetic review in a very long time, so obviously they got their just desserts. The last brand I'm gonna talk to you guys about is Lime Crime. <laughs> the very first video I made that was kind of like a rant, but also an informative of rant video was about Lime Crime when the whole thing first happened. Ever since then, I've seen report after report after report after report of things just not getting any better. So I figured, you know what, why not just end the video with the shittiest brand of all time. Now before Lime Crime was even thought up, Dodeer, who is the creator of Lime Crime, had a sketchy past from the get-go. From threatening to sue a 13-year-old over how something was credited or not credited, to selling repackaged glitter and claiming them as her own and hiking up the price of them to astronomical prices for fucking glitter. She also sold party favor sunglasses that you could find at Party City for kids, like the little kids glasses. She sold them on her website for 14 fucking dollars and you can find the same ones at Party City for a dollar a piece, maybe even less than that. Xenia, who is Dodeer, she uses Dodeer as her company name, I guess, also held a couple of raffles when the brand first took off, and the raffles were for stuffed unicorns, jewelry boxes, things of that nature. She mentions that the money the entrance spends to get into the raffle will be donated to an animal shelter in New York City, but she never specifies the exact shelter the money's gonna be going to. The first raffle goes by, and then another one comes up for more money, and she says that she raised $200 to go to the Brooklyn shelter, which does not exist. Because of that, people got pissed off, reported her PayPal, and because of that, her PayPal gets suspended. Why was it suspended? Due to fraudulent charity raffles. This was all before Lime Crime even launched. Like, she was already a sketchy person from the get-go, but it gets better. October of 2008, Lime Crime officially launches as a makeup brand, and a month later, she reposts a picture of herself for, like, Throwback Thursday or something of that nature, and it's a picture of her dressed as Hitler.
She defends her actions later on by saying that it was okay that she did that because her grandmother is Jewish. In 2009, a lot of the newer indie brands were getting exposed for selling repackaged micas for insanely high prices, and Lime Crime was one of those brands that was exposed through blog posts with comparison swatches of the micas in their original packaging compared to the ones that she had repackaged with her own branding. And that was all in her first year of business that this whole thing happened. But like I said, it gets better. In 2010, Doe tried to be a fucking bitch and sabotage the launch of Sugar Pill Cosmetics by saying that the owner of Sugar Pill, who was Amy, also had a lot of repackaged micas in her brand, which later on comes out to be a completely false statement. We also find out that Doe had made various accounts, sock puppet accounts on Flickr, to try and expose Amy or something that she did not fucking do. People find out that it's Doe in these sock puppet accounts and expose her ass for it, and then she shuts up pretty fucking quickly. She also tried to market her products as vegan, even though there were still bee wax and Carmine in them. And then we come to October 2014 when the huge security breach happened. When the brand first started to get a little bit bigger, she was warned beforehand to update the security settings on her website to ensure the financial security of her customers. But did she do that? Nah. Not only did she not update her security systems on the website, but she knew about the breach and kept quiet about it until February 2015. At this point, when she made a fucking Instagram post about what had happened, it had already been three months into the security breach. Three months go by with no warning, no anything, no emails, nothing from her to any of her customers. And three months is a very fucking long time for these scammers to get pretty much everyone's shit with ease. But instead of emailing anybody like any normal fucking business person would fucking do in something like this, she took to Instagram, like I said, three months later to warn people about it three months after it fucking started. Not everyone has an Instagram, especially not back then when it really wasn't as popular. And even if they did have it, not everyone was on Instagram on a frequent basis. And most importantly, nobody fucking expects to be told about something that serious via fucking Instagram. That's like the major news outlets taking to WhatsApp or whatever that fucking busted ass app is called to warn everybody that there's a major disaster happening somewhere in the country. To know about the breach and not say anything to your customers who are responsible for your brand even being as successful as it is, to me, that is fucking ridiculous. And I'd love to say that that was the last thing she did that was fucking stupid, but there's actually one more thing I want to talk to you guys about as well about her. After the whole breach thing was finally addressed by Deer on Instagram, people got fucking pissed and told her that they're gonna take their business elsewhere and this was her response. You guys need to quit coming after me because seriously it was your fault that you idiots were stupid enough to spend $16 for a gram of product. But how can I blame you? My products are second to none in quality. Beautiful, whimsical colors and designer packaging. If you're too poor to buy my products, then go somewhere else and spend less and get a low quality product. You don't deserve to use Lime Crime. I'm actually thinking of making the LC Shop account registration invite friends only because I don't need your money. If you want to spend your money on low quality mass produced pigments from MAC, go right ahead. It's no skin off my nose. I'll still be making more cash than most of you imbeciles. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm not checking this post again. If you have anything else to say, that's too bad because I'm screening my comments as I have no time for trolls. I have a life. Bitch. You compromised everybody's financial security for three fucking months and don't tell anybody? And when you finally find some time in your busy fucking life to come around and fucking tell them about it, you tell them on fucking Instagram and then have that to say? after your bullshit, I just cannot bring myself. I don't give a fuck how nice her shit looks. I don't give a fuck how colorful it is. I could find shit just as good. As a matter of fact, I could find shit twice as good in quality and worth the money as her products elsewhere. In my opinion, there are so many other brands who deserve the success that she's gotten who would treat you better as her customers. Like this is to everybody. This is not just to certain people. This was a general message for everybody. And like she says, she doesn't need your money, so why would you give her something she doesn't need? I'm just saying. 
And I don't know about you guys, but I don't know if anybody or why anybody would even want to invest their money into a company who is run by someone who is as much of a dipshit and a dumbass as this girl is. Like guys, she literally knew what was going on and failed to tell anybody about it until three months later. Something smells fishy. And like I said before in another video, no me guste pescado. I don't fucking like fish. So when I see something fishy happening, I call that shit out. Something is not right there. There was something that she was benefiting from, from that security breach. I'm just saying. But anyways, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the video off with that last one. Cause as you can probably tell, I was getting kind of heated. I'm sorry. I just, it, I get so angry when I hear about people doing these shitty things like this dumb bitch legitimately went three months without saying anything to anybody about a fucking security breach like I'm just I like you were blessed enough to have a cosmetic company and you want to treat your customers like that and compromise their financial security that blatantly I am investigating a few more brands and if you guys want to see a part two of this series let me know down below as always guys I don't expect everyone to agree with me and I don't expect everyone to disagree with me either this is all up to your interpretation I'm just delivering what's happening to you guys and what you guys take from it is all up to you with that being said guys leave your comments down below if you agree with me tell me why if not tell me why not you know what I mean I want to know what you guys think like I said I bring subject matter like this onto my channel because I want to know what you guys think and if there are any brands that you don't want to buy from anymore or that you've had a bad experience with leave your stories down below I love reading these things and you guys know more than anything else in the world, I try to keep it 100 with you guys the entire fucking time and I only want to bring you the facts. But anyways guys, I'm going to get on out of here and start getting dinner ready because tonight is movie night and we're going to finally watch Rogue One. I am so excited. I saw the trailer for The Last Jedi and I fucking lost my mind. I just, I'm so excited for that fucking movie. I love you guys so much. Leave all your requests down below. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.